Let me start off saying that if you want a solid, reliable, fast item transport, just use one of these methods. This is not the video for you. What this video is for, if you want to spice up your build with some motion, uh, this is a fancy conveyor belt. It can move players, items, entities. Uh, so if you have a big open factory interior area that you don't know what to do with, then putting this moving conveyor belt is really going to spice things up. I'll show you it working. It's not fast, but it's very reliable and easy to build. Okay, start with the tutorial. Start off by digging a trench. Uh, make sure that no edge is longer than 13 blocks and no edge is shorter than three blocks. This is the absolute minimum. I wouldn't recommend going close to this, like maybe five or six, because the redstone gets a bit tricky if you put two corners right next to each other. And uh, so now we're gonna add the pistons and furnaces. Pick a direction clockwise or counterclockwise. Every corner needs one piston and one furnace. And now the redstone, first make this clock, pick any piston, it doesn't really matter, uh, but this is going to be the side with the on off switch. So pick a side, build this clock. This can be at two ticks to make it faster. Uh, some stuff might break, but um, I'd really just recommend going three ticks. Okay. So the way that this is wired is you have one big long chain going around the whole thing. I'll show you it working. See that first signal, it propagated around the whole thing and now that there's just a on off on off going around, it just looks like it's alternating. The way to get that to work, uh, the trick is two ticks between every piston. So you see that uh, this piston is powered, and then two redstone ticks later, you get another piston powered, two redstone ticks later, another piston powered, two redstone ticks. This is what I was saying with the uh, two corners right next to each other. What you can do is split it up. So you see this is powered, two ticks later this is powered, and then two ticks later this is powered with this little branch. And I also did that over here, another branch. But the basic rule is this is powered two redstone ticks later, this is powered. Okay, now to add in the actual conveyor belt, which is, you can, I went with yellow terracotta, I recommend that because it looks just like honey, but you can use slime or any other terracotta. So the, you fill in everything alternating, and then at the corners, make sure you keep the rule that it's alternating, don't mess up and accidentally do this. It has to be glazed terracotta honey, glazed terracotta honey. All right, you can do two glazed terracotta in a row, but you cannot do two honey in a row. Okay. And then with the corners, you can't have all the corners empty. You can't have all the corners full. If you do either of those, it's not gonna move. You have to go for about 50-50. Corners empty and corners full. And if you do that, then it's gonna move. And the way this is wired, it takes a little bit to warm up, but once the signal propagates everywhere, then the whole thing will start moving. Okay, so for items, remember that this isn't perfectly reliable. See, these items fell off. So maybe use this for cactus or some other really cheap, easy item that you have a ton of. And I've built these two little contraptions to help with uh, moving items around. This first is just a piston. It animates really well. Pushes If you have an item on every honey, then this piston will push it off on every honey. And it's just this. This is the whole redstone for this piston. It uses the signal that the conveyor belt uses, and it uses the fact that this is transparent, and this is the opposite of transparent. And that's it, just four ticks, two ticks. And this is what I was saying, if you make a faster clock, this will break, or it'll be a little bit off so you can mess with this timings. But if you just go with the standard uh, three tick clock, 
this is gonna work really nicely. Okay, so this can drop off to anything. This can drop off to one of those other methods. This can drop off to a whole other conveyor belt on a different floor or just into hoppers. And if you do do hoppers, I'll remind you that honey blocks are smaller than one block. So if I drop these redstone in, they will go into this chest. Uh, so if you just need to get into a hopper, you don't need to build this thing, although it does look nice. You can just build it a uh, hopper right underneath the trail. Okay, so I have this hopper line going into these droppers. This dropper goes up, up, the side, down. And this is all the redstone to keep these droppers going. It uses the same transparent and opaque to uh, only drop onto honey. That's just a really nice animation. Uh, great centerpiece for your factory. Uh, these blocks don't have to be transparent. They can be uh, any solid block or any transparent block. And the reason I include these two particular contraptions is because if you do want to have items going around, you have to have them to reset the five minute timer. So the final step of this is adding these two. And this glass on the corner, you only have to put it right after the dropper because the dropper is random and just adding a couple glass around here will uh, make it more reliable. Another way to make it much more reliable is uh, putting a cobweb here and that'll eliminate all the velocity of the dropper and basically you won't have any randomness but the trail won't be as smooth uh, you won't have the full five minutes to work with so maybe you'll have to have another one of these. Uh, you can do the, the cobweb to make it a little bit more reliable. So uh, I hope you found this informal and you think this is a cool thing to add to your factory build. Uh, thanks for watching.